Greetings Hombies, this is our Sands of Vool, and in this video we're going to be having a look at how to sculpt runes. So in this video I'm going to be making these runes as VDMs, but that's pretty much irrelevant because it still involves the sculpting process, so you can still use this to sculpt any sorts of runes or detailing that you want to add. Now I'm going to go through this in order, first of all I'm going to go through the general process of this so you can get an idea of what we're doing. If you only want to see that it means that it's right at the beginning, and then I'm going to go through the tips and tricks that I use to make this as efficient as possible. So what I'm going to do is just press N and I'm going to bring in a sculpt sculpting plane because this is going to be for VDMs but effectively this is the same as anything else that you'd be sculpting on and this comes with a multi-resolution modifier and I'm just going to up that to three just to make sure this is a little bit smoother. So let's start off with brushes. So the main thing that we're going to be using for this if I drag this out is we're actually going to be using the mask brush and we're also going to be using the mesh filter to make this possible. Now the important bit about this is that for the mask you need to get your strength up to probably one would be my recommendation otherwise it takes this a long time to do. And the big thing that you're going to need to decide is how you want to use this fall off. Effectively, I would say you've got a choice between smooth, smoother, or sometimes I use sharp, but only using one of these different stroke methods. I'll talk about that in a second. Now, I have heard someone say that they've used the constant for this, but I think that gives a worse result. So I'm just going to talk through the whole process really quickly, as I said, and we'll just compare these brushes. So let's start with the smooth. I'm just going to press F to get my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to do a line there. And you can see we've got the strength at one, so it gets the mask almost totally there on one stroke. Then we'll go on to the smoother, and we can have a look at that there. And then we'll have a look at the sharp. We'll have a look at that there. And then finally, I will do the constant. And you can see why I generally don't really like the constant, even though it looks really nice here. So the process is that you mask your area. Then you're going to press Control and I to invert the mask. So you've only got the areas that you drew being the ones that are going to be affected. And then we're going to come down to our mesh filter, change that to inflate. And all we need to do is, if you come side on, click and drag to the right. And you can see that's going to make our raised areas really quickly and easily. And you'll see why I don't like this constant one. It gets really, really grainy along the side. Now, you can see that we get some different profiles here with our smooth, smoother, and sharp being, well, the sharp is more pointed, though do note it's just around the edges, which might be what you want. And then you've got the smooth and the smoother being a little different in how they look. So that's going to be the process that we're going to use to make these runes. And if that's all you wanted, you can bugger off now and you're ready to go. But I do think the tips and tricks are worth staying around for, so I'll start going through those. And if you want them, then, well, that's up to you. So to get rid of the mask, press Alt and M, and let's start going through this. I'm going to hide that M panel just so we can see this a little bit more easily. So first things first, back to our mask brush. And for most things like runes, you're probably going to want a general shape, and drawing this by hand is going to be a bit of a pain. You're not going to get flat edges, it's just going to look a bit of a mess. So I generally suggest that you change your stroke from the spaced onto the curve brush. You can use the line as well. I just prefer the curve brush because you can modify it after the fact. Now, there is a bit of a weirdness to this in that you don't use your left mouse button, you use your right mouse button. So how this works is you press Control and then you right click each time you want a point. And if you want to, with a point selected, you can press G and move it around. Then A to select all of them, they'll turn blue, and then you can delete to start again. So let's say I want to make something like a dwarvish rune. I'm going to hold down control and do click, click, click there, click there, and then one last click to there. And actually that looks pretty good straight off, but if you want to, you can left click to select and then press G to start moving around. Now, even though you can't see it here, the brush size does matter. So if you press F, notice that the curve disappears, but it's still there. So I can make this a little bit smaller and I would recommend that. And then we can always change the fall off still. I'm gonna go with smooth and then come back to this. So once you're happy with it, you just press control and then left click and you get your mask. And I'd recommend actually, this does cause some problems on the overlaps here. So I actually click two or three times to make this really clearly masked off. So you don't have any layers of some bits are slightly masked, but you can barely see it. So that's the first tip. Second tip, if you want this to not have these curved edges, which let's be honest, aren't really great for let's say something like a dwarfish rune. If you come up to the mask menu and click grow mask. So that's why I made this a little bit smaller. So mask and then grow mask. It'll get a little bit larger, but it makes these nice squared off edges. And I actually think they look really interesting and dwarf-like. So that's my next tip, is if you want these sort of squared off edges, use that mask and then grow mask. Next tip, if I control an I to invert this and come back to our mesh filter and then start trying to do this, it won't work. I am clicking now. 
And there's a reason for that. It seems to be a bit hidden, and it's obviously a bit of an issue with Blender. This shouldn't be the case. But that's because we've still got our curve stroke method going. So I actually need to come back to mask, change that stroke to anything. Let's go to space, come back to my mesh filter, and then I can do the standard drag up that I did before, making sure that the filter type is on inflate. So that's a range of tips there that are probably gonna be quite useful. And you get this really nice looking rune. I think that looks really good. And if you just press Alt and M at any point, you'll get rid of the mask. So for me, I'm pretty happy with that as a rune. I think that will look really good. So I'm just gonna go into object mode and I'm just gonna G and X that to the side and we'll just bring in, if I just press N and bring in another sculpting plane. We're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Let's up that to three levels of multi-resolution. But now we're gonna have a look at a bit more of an Elfie type room. And there's a few more tips coming for that. So obviously, I mean, you could just draw this out as you choose, but I still prefer to use the mask brush and I do generally use the curve brush for this as we were going to. So A and then A again to make sure everything's blue. Delete that curve and let's start again. So let's do something like control right click there, there, and then let's do something like there. So I'm gonna click and hold down my mouse to get this curved shape. And then I'm gonna click here, click, and then hold down my mouse. And again, we've got that curved shape. And just like a normal curve, you can click on any of these and move them around if you want to. And you can click on the central one, R, to rotate it. All the standard things you'd do. So I'm quite happy with this for my shape. And I'm going to add a couple of points in here as well. So go back to my fall off. Make sure I'm happy with that. And then control, left click. And then let's do one, two, three of those. And then I'm going to do the same thing, sculpt, mask and then grow my mask again. Now I wanna put a couple of dots here. So I'm gonna change my stroke method to space and then I'm gonna F to make my brush a little bit bigger and then do something like just a load of clicks. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing again. So we've got our two dots. So this will make quite a nice looking rune. If I go to mesh filter again, control and I to invert it and then drag those up. Again, pretty happy with that. I think that's gonna look quite nice but maybe this sort of tip here isn't quite what I want and here from an elvish rune. So let's undo that. I'm actually gonna go back into this mask here and let's come back to our mask and I'm going to try and get rid of some of this. So what I'm gonna do is press control and you can get rid of some of your mask. So I'm gonna get rid of a good bit of that and I'm gonna do the same thing up here as well. So at this point, you are probably gonna need a tablet for this if you want to do what I'm gonna do next, but there are some relatively affordable ones. The thing that's quite important with this is you really want to have something that has pressure sensitivity. So that does really help. In fact, I think I went a little bit too far with that. Let's just do something like that. So I've got a link to a couple of tablets that are in the description. I've got my cheap tablet, which is the one I actually started out with. And I've got a link to the tablet that I'm using now, which is a Wacom Cintiq. And then I've got one to a really high end tablet, which if I had the money, I'd definitely get, but I don't. So there we go, that's life. So first things first, we want to deal with some of the settings over here. And we want this to be constantly using a strength of one. So you can see here, we've got a pen in my brush settings. And what I don't want to have is the strength being controlled by the pen pressure. I want it to be one constantly. So you'll notice that if I put it on here, it also shows it up there. So you could turn it off there as well. But what I do want to do, so I have more control over this, is change my radius to be something that's affected by the pen pressure. That means that if I come here, so notice I can press control and delete that. I've got this really, really small brush that's working here instead of having a thicker brush. So I can make more of a point. And then if I take my finger off control, I can control that to have more of a point. Something like that. That's looking a little bit blurred there as well. So let's just drag that round. So this gives you more control over your brush because you can select this or select how sharp the point is of your tip effectively. So you can fiddle around with that until you're happy with it. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So let's just do something like that. So having this pen pressure is really, really useful for being able to get these really fine little points. And you can still do things like press F and make the brush really fine. And then that just means that your tiny little pen movements that you're like pushing really lightly make even more of a fine detailed impression. So you've got this double control there by using the tablet. If you don't have a tablet, obviously that's not something you can do, but it is quite nice to get these little bits of added finesse. So mesh filter, control and I to invert, and then let's drag that up and you'll notice we get this not great looking shape where we've used the combination of the two and you can just come here to smooth and we can just smooth that out a little bit. Somewhere about there 
and we get a nice result even after we've done this bit manually. And if you really want to, you can come into the side, and let's press F to make that a little bit bigger, come to our smooth brush, and you can always just smooth that out a little bit to get a bit of a smoother result there. So it's up to you how much you want to sort of finesse this to get to the point where you're really happy with it. I generally give this a good sort of once over without being too pedantic about things because, well, these are gonna actually be relatively small runes by the end of it. So something like that, and then let's smooth this one over here at the side. Just a little bit. There we go, to get this nice curved shape. So there we go, that's our next rune, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now the final little tip that I just want to mention, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. So we just speed through this, but all we're doing is making the same dwarfish rune as we did before. And then because you've still got your curve brush in exactly the same place, so you do have to be careful to align it, what you can do is press F, make your brush nice and small, let's go something like that, and then let's put our mask on again, and then mask, and then grow mask. And then what this will allow you to do is if I control and I and invert it again, you could do something like the opposite. So I can change my stroke back to space, because you have to do that, mesh filter, inflate, and then instead of dragging to the right, I can drag to the left, and I can have my runes have a little bit more depth to them. For example, something like that, or you could go a little bit further if you want. So you get this really nice additional effect on them. So that's another little bit of fun you can have with the curve brush. It is quite tricky to get to work without the curve brush, but either way you can do it, and it just gives you a little bit more detail and depth if I just get rid of the mask, you can see you've got this little bit of extra difference between the two here where you've got the additional detail around the outside. And once you've got those sorted, you're good to go. You can do what we were doing at the beginning and just either sculpt these onto other areas or you can just convert them to VDMs as we've done in previous videos. I've got a link to that in the description if you want to have a look at how to create a VDM to be able to add these to objects. Hopefully that will give you some opportunities to have some fun with some runes and I hope you have a great day.